remember when, what was it, the lo locavore became the 2007 word of the year. It's like, well, we've been locavores here for decades. You know, we've been trying to figure out how to make this work. Uh, so again, that it's successful for everyone. Because if, if someone within our community isn't getting great access to healthy food, then that's not a healthy food system. People get started with a great idea, with a great recipe, they turn it into a commercial product, they find markets, oftentimes through our marketing assistance, and then they might graduate to their own facility or they might partner uh, with other food, commercial food um, manufacturers to create the product for them. In 2010, we estimated that about $25 million of annual sales were generated uh, through clients or tenants of the Food Ventures program. So you can see the economic impacts. Oftentimes, I think economic development professionals don't always think of the food sector as really accelerating job growth in our communities. But we've had a profound effect with the local food economy here. We employ 30 full-time people, most of them here in, one of, in Meigs County, one of the uh, most underemployed uh, and uh, impoverished counties in the, in the state of Ohio. We've got a three-quarter million dollar payroll. We're unapologetically capitalists. We have to make a profit to have a sustainable business, to pay a living wage, to pay health care, to pay a premium to our farmers. By the same token, we're also unapologetically not motivated by money itself. We're more motivated uh, by what we believe to be an implicit uh, contract, a responsibility with both our dairy farmer and our customer, with our environment around us, and with, our, with the people who are part of the Snowville Creamery team, we believe we're helping redefine the very sort of community capitalism that as an old man, I can tell you, I believe was the way that America prospered in the 1950s and 1960s. I heard John Mellencamp on the Today Show a few months ago said something about it's funny how people will research their next car, their television, their next computer for months. But when it comes to food, they grab the nearest, cheapest thing to the counter and check out and go. Uh, and what's more important to our life, our health, health, you know, our future than our food? Some of the fellows I've talked to think that folks like myself don't exist. Uh, they've gotten so far away from the grassroots farms uh, that they don't think anybody can can survive doing what we do. Uh, and that's the, the confinement livestock guys I'm talking about. Certain that anybody that gets to eat one of our turkeys or chickens or pork, and we have thousands of customers that would agree there's a totally different flavor. It's like grandma's used to taste or great grandma's used to taste. And uh, it's, it seems to be firmer, uh, it's not mushy. Uh, there's just a lot of qualities it has that the confinement buildings can't match. Uh, and uh, I, from studies that I've read and things that I feel, we're getting, we have more nutrition and it's livestock raised as livestock was meant to be raised. A lot of people think what we're trying to introduce is a whole new menu and idea and I'm just going, no, you, need, you use tomatoes, don't you? You use peppers, you use onions. Use what you're familiar with, but support your community at the same time keep the money local makes a big difference and you're as we know as chefs as people that love food the flavors there it's inherent to the fresher product nutrition as well mm -hmm. something that you can't recapture once it's harvested that's a peak of nutrition gain something that's harvested three weeks early so that it can ship lacks the total nutrition value that you know people are hoping to get from it yeah these cows have a wonderful life wish all human beings on the planet had a life as good as these cows just about perfect I think uh, if you can look around the farm here, you see happy animals, you know, you, you see there's happy chickens running around in the chicken lots and happy turkeys and, and the pigs uh, are enjoying themselves. They get to chase each other, run around a little bit, uh, root a little bit, have plenty of feed and water. So they're, they're happy, or I think they're happy, they can't tell me that, but I think you can tell the difference between a happy animal and a sad animal. That's, that's how we do things and I, that's how I feel the difference is. When we look at this local food movement overall, uh, this area, the Appalachian counties of Ohio, 
southeastern Ohio, certainly I think Athens has been at the epicenter of this movement. Local food, agriculture, really did not constitute I would say the same recognition that it does now as an economic driver. And there's literally, you know, hundreds and hundreds of people who have worked to develop our food system here have really been able to impress upon elected officials, policymakers, and certainly I think local and county government uh, folks to understand that this is real, that this is entrepreneurship, that this is economic development that this is job creation. A lot of farmers anymore and a lot of consumers don't realize how important farmers are. Without farmers, you can have all the oil you want, all the nuclear power you want, all of whatever you're thinking, but it's not gonna feed us. Farmers only feed the world.